What's up YouTube, I'm Mr. No Name, or Max as people know him in the real world, and today I'm bringing you guys some Call of Duty Ghost dubs gameplay on the map Freight. Um, it's going to be most of the rounds, I cut out a couple though just for brevity's sake, so enjoy that in the background. Um, so today's video is actually pretty cool here, we're going to be talking about the Black Ops 3 World League that just got announced today, this morning. And I thought I'd go ahead and make a video on it, giving you guys information that we now know about it, questions that I have just off the top of my head, and things like that. So getting into it, what is this World League? So first of all, it's going to be a $3 million prize pool. It's going to be around the world. There's going to be an NA division, EU division, and then an Australia slash New Zealand division. If you're in other countries, you can still get in through the Challenger division. Uh, there's going to be 12 teams from NA, 10 from EU, and then 8 from AU. And then that's going to get reduced when they actually go into the World Championship. So teams will be cut from that. And one team from Challenger will be moving up to play in the World Championships as well. So it's basically kind of like the LCS of COD, if you guys watch League of Legends or anything like that. Uh, there's going to be lands and online tournaments for points starting in January. There's going to be two seasons, and the World Championship will take place in fall. So what that means is that instead of... Because before we've always had champs like pretty early on in the year, so teams are rushing to try and learn the game as fast as possible, and then we have like nothing to look forward to at the end of the year and the game sort of gets kind of stale and everything, and nobody really wants to play anymore, and we start getting people going off and playing CSGO or League or something like that. So this will kind of keep people around a little bit longer, and it will keep things more competitive, in my opinion. Um, so there are a few things to talk about here. The first thing is that I think Activision is definitely making the right move here. Um, it's going to help the esports community quite a bit, but I also think it's a, just a really good marketing tool that they're doing here. They gave us hardly any information about it, if you really think about it. We've got to wait to learn more. I mean, I don't really see how they could mess this up, like, badly enough for it to be considered a bad thing. Um, pretty much in any way, it's going to be a good thing. But a, a few questions that are coming up is, what are going to be the age requirements? You know, how old do you have to be to actually participate in this? And the answer they gave is that they were going to follow the guidelines of the ratings in the different territories and countries. If you go by that, if you're in America, we go by the ESRB rating, and our mature rating is 17 and up. So if we go by that, that means if you're 17, you should be able to participate. But previous championships have required you to be 18 years or older in the United States. So it's not really answered, but I'm, I wouldn't get your hopes up if you're under 17. And if you're 17, I'd still be a little bit worried because it's, I, I have a feeling it's probably going to wind up being 18 plus. But it's going to be around there, and you just have to be that age by January to participate. Um, yeah, we just don't know which age yet. And then another question I have is, what about pro points now? Because this new World League system has their own point system, so because it's directly under Activision. So how much do pro points really matter now? Are they going to merge, or is everybody going to kind of switch over to the World League points um, you know, if you earn points on MLG, will that count? Um, and if not, you know, I mean, are pro points just really going to be used for some of the smaller MLG tournaments? Or are there going to be, um, you know, a bunch of smaller... Or will they become obsolete because of all the lands that are going to come leading up to the World League thing? So it's, it's just kind of a toss-up in the air right now. Another thing is, what are going to be the exact payouts for the territories and uh, different countries... And also the differences between the Pro and the Challenger series as far as, you know, the kind of payouts at the lands for those. Um, that'll probably get announced at a later date. Another thing is, will teams be cut from the Challenger as time goes on? Because I have a feeling that they're kind of leaving it open to whoever wants to sign up for Challenger. But that could be a lot of teams. That'll be really hard to get everybody in online tournaments or lands and things like that. So I'm assuming as time goes on, you have to have maybe a certain amount of points and then it's a cutoff sort of thing. I don't know. We'll have to see how that goes. But yeah, that's just some of the questions I've got from it. As far as if I'm going to be trying for it, I can't really answer it yet. I, if they've got enough online tournaments, I'll definitely try for it. I'll get a team together and we'll go for it. But uh, as far as lands go, it'll be a little bit difficult for me to try and have enough money to actually go to all the lands that I'm assuming are going to come from this. Um, it's a possibility though, I'll just have to see. 
Um, it'll also depend on the age requirements. I mean, I'm 19 now, so I'm good to go no matter what, but I've got to make sure that I can get teammates that would also fit the age requirements. So we'll just have to see how things go. So that's the video for today. So as you guys can see, we're coming to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and or subscribe. If you didn't, then let me know what I can do better next time. Constructive criticism goes a long way, guys. Until next time, everybody, peace out.